So you've, been, so you've been here for a minute and you're getting kind of sick of the employer supplied housing that you've been provided. The building's old and musty, the stairwell's been missing a light bulb for over a month, and the bar downstairs gets too noisy at night. You go to your employer and if you're lucky they say they'll pay a rent stipend if you move, but you're gonna have to do all the legwork. Now here you are, on the internet trying to figure out how the hell you're gonna find a place without any help. Well, good thing you're here because I got you. You're watching Sekidur, and this is how to find a new apartment in Korea. This is going to be an abridged episode detailing a very cursory way of browsing for a place, so make sure to like and subscribe because I'll be making a more detailed sequel to this video in the coming weeks. Alright, let's get to it. So the easiest way for you to start looking is to figure out how much money your employer is willing to give you and how much you're willing to spend if need be. Also, make sure to check how much money you already have because, as I'll explain later, you need to have a relatively sizable deposit ready to go. Now there are a few apps that you can use to browse for a new place. The main one that I'm going to talk about today is Naver Budongsan. The other two that are really big in the country are Chikbang and Tabang, but they all pretty much work the same way. So all you have to do is open the app, search for your preferred living locations, and look around for the prices. So let's get to work with Naver Budongsan. Go to Naver, find the Budongsan tab, and click on it. Same as uh, the Jungkwan tab, it's usually right beside it. Now, the categories given to you are as follows. You have apartment or office style, villa or jutek, which is similar to a two-story or three-story walk-up in a low-rise building, or maybe it's just the upstairs apartment of a detached house. Usually it's not a very tall building. Then you have one or two rooms, which don't count the bathroom or balcony areas, but they will count a separate kitchen if there is one. Finally, the next category is for commercial spaces or land, but let's deal with that another day. Alright, when Naver has loaded the properties in the area, you'll see a variety of different prices, so let's focus on the main three categories. The first one is Meme, or the purchase price. The second is Jonsei, or the year lease price. And then you have Wolse, which is the monthly rental price. And I'm going to break this down a little bit more. So Meme is the straight up purchase. If you're looking to rent, this is not what you're looking for, and since this is about finding a rental place, I'm not going to talk about it. Then you have Jonsei, which is interesting, because Jonsei is not actually available in most countries. I don't think it's available in any other countries actually. But if you don't already know, the Jonsei system works very much like a lease, except that you pay the lease price in whole at the beginning of the contract. The main difference is that when you move out, you get all of the money back in its entirety. So in essence, you get to live in a place for free, but with the caveat of having to have the money up front. For those who have the money, this is a really efficient system and an ideal system. But if you don't have the money, you can still go and get a Junsei loan, which, to be honest, are kind of falling out of fashion with a lot of the financial institutions. Anyways, if you do manage to get one, the interest on it is a lot lower than the monthly rent prices when considering the size and quality of the living space. Other than the interest on those loans if you get one, all you have to actually pay for are utilities, your regular living expenses, and the only thing that comes out of the initial payment is whatever depreciation you incur due to inflation. So there's no actual monetary value that you lose, it's really just the buying power that fades over time. Now, if you do choose to go with this system, make sure that you get the paperwork right, and if you intend to extend your stay beyond the initial contract, do your best to get your landlord to sign the second contract, because landlord and tenant squabbles often arise when there's no physical documentation to back up arguments on either side. Finally, the third pricing option is called Wolse, and Wolse just refers to a monthly rent. Now, these prices are usually split into two numbers on the app, the first one being in the hundreds or thousands, and the second being in the tens or hundreds. The first number is representative of the price of your security deposit, or the bojungum. The second number represents the actual monthly rent price in the tens of thousands, so for example, if the bojungum is 100 and the monthly rent price is 75, then to move in you'll have to pay a 1 million won deposit and rent of 750,000 per month. Your first payment will usually include both prices, so make sure you have that on hand when you move in. Some places also have a system called Ban Chonsei, which is kind of like a hybrid of a Chonsei and a Wolsei, but the prices for both are dropped. If you're looking to rent a small place, then your best bet will probably be looking at either a villa, a one-room, or a two-room option, since apartment prices are generally prohibitive for anyone here for a limited amount of time. One side note though, Although these apps usually include pictures of the rental space, 
Never ever ever sign a contract off one of those sites before actually visiting the property since the pictures can easily be fixed whether by angle or by edit. Often enough, you'll be able to call the phone number affixed to a listing and arrange a time to view the property. Sometimes they'll just give you the passcode to the apartment itself and let you look around on your own, but it's more common for the building owner or real estate office handling the deal to meet you there and to show you around. Finally, you can always visit a real estate office in person and pay the fixer fee. Although the cost of using a middleman isn't ideal, it's much easier than trying to call everyone in the area to get specifics, to view rooms, and to negotiate contracts on your own. Also, real estate offices or budongsans are restricted in their fees by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, and Transport. So just look up the fees and don't get played because there's a certain limit that they can charge you based on how expensive the transaction is. On top of all of that, real estate offices usually know all of the places to rent in the area, their estimated prices, and the sellers themselves. This gives them a little bit of leverage to bargain with the property owner for fairer prices than advertised. Generally, Going to a budongsan is the most convenient way of finding a new place, but always go in having prices, locations, and specifications in mind. The Seoul, Gyeonggi area has bare listing agencies that provide English services and are a quick Google away. If you're well connected in the foreign community of your region, it may be easier just to get hooked up with a real estate office that's accustomed to working with foreigners from other foreigners that have done it before. If you can speak Korean, just walk around and shop around the budongsans in the neighborhood that you're aiming to rent out. Finally. Before you rent, make sure to ask what the furniture situation looks like in a given apartment. Some of them will come with a bed, TV, microwave, stovetop, and the works. Others may come without floor heating or an air conditioner or kitchen appliances at all. Some come with internet and a new built-in induction stove. Others come with a washing machine from 2002. As with anything we talk about on this channel, do your research before putting your money anywhere. We can't do that for you. You have to do that on your own. Now, you may hear about a rental tax benefit from your coworkers or somebody, but just know that foreigners don't actually qualify for a return on a rental space. That's only for actual citizens. So if you're on an E2, don't expect to get it. All right, that was a short one for today. Hopefully you found this helpful. And if you did, please share this video with anyone you know that may be looking for a new place. Be easy fam. 2020 is almost over, so don't fuck around and make it any worse than it already is. Also, rest in peace, Sean Connery. Later.